there's a CR that goes right up to Christmas break, and then they jam upon us, as was been said, thousands of pages in legislation that no one really has a chance to adequately read through and digest or amend or anything else. Last year it was $1.7 trillion, you know, with a few hours' notice, and they added 100 or $200 billion extra sprinkled on top of spending that no one had ever actually vetted or gone through. We cannot do that anymore. We have a $33.6 trillion federal debt. Moody's downgraded our, our credit rating uh, just this week. Two weeks ago, the Treasury Department announced we have to borrow, borrow $1.5 trillion over the next two quarters to keep the government uh, going. We cannot do that anymore. And so the latter CR, the two-step CR, everybody calls it something different. It's a new innovation. But it's going to change the way we've done this. We have broken the fever. We are not going to have a massive omnibus spending bill right before Christmas. That is a gift to the American people because that is no way to legislate. It is not good stewardship. It's the reason we're in so much debt. That and, and, you know, the effects of Bidenomics, but we have to change it. And so we've gotten together. I believe there's going to be bipartisan agreement on that to break it up and put it into January, January 19th for the first tranche of the bills and fe uh, February 2nd for the rest. And that will allow us to go through the deliberative process in good faith. I'm going to take everybody at their word that we're doing this in good faith to do the appropriations process as it should be done. It should have been done before. That didn't but seem to satisfy some of the, you know, arch conservatives in their conference. That's why the Freedom Caucus put out a statement yeah. when they were opposed. Chad, I'm one of the arch conservatives, okay? And I want to cut spending right now, and I would like to put policy writers on this. But when you have a three-vote majority, as we do right now, we don't have the votes to be able to advance that right now. So what we need to do is avoid the government shutdown. Why? Because that would unduly harm the American people. Troops wouldn't be paid. Oh, you know, we know all the effects of that. And so we have to avoid that, and we have a responsibility to do it. But this allows, as was said, as the majority leader said, this allows us as conservatives to go into the fight on the next uh, the stages of this, to talk about real border changes, policies at the border, to close the southern border, to get it under control, to, to talk about the oversight that's necessary on additional Ukraine aid to get Israel done if they don't do it as we beg them to do. All these other matters in the supplemental, that puts us in the, in the policy discussion and we'll, we'll have stringent fights on, on principle and philosophy and cuts as well. Just, just, just to follow up on that, a number of Republicans are supporting your plan to avert a government shutdown, but you've obviously heard the concerns from the some that are not. What did you tell those members who call your plan a mistake, who say it's a surrender? It's, we're not surrendering. We're fighting. But you have to be wise about choosing the fights. you gotta, you got to fight fights that you can win, and we're going to. And you're going to see this House majority stand together on our principle, and, and we're going to do that. But the, the shutdown would occur on November 17th. Look, it took decades to get into this mess, right? I've been at the job less than three weeks, right? I can't change, I can't turn an aircraft carrier overnight, but this was a very important first step to get us to the next stage so that we can change how Washington works. And I think the latter CR, the two-step CR, however you describe it, is a big, important part of that. And I think every member in that room agrees that that's an important innovation and it changes the way things are done. <laughs> Let me go to Monet real quick. Yeah, you're, but you're doing what Kevin McCarthy did. You're extending government funding. You're not including spending cuts. Democrats, you're going to need them to carry this. He lost his job. A large part of this. Are you concerned at all that this could make your speakership any less secure? I'm not concerned about it at all. And, and Kevin it take, should take no blame for that. Kevin was in a very difficult situation when that happened. This is a different situation. The innovation that we've created, this new vehicle that the Democrats initially said was so frightening, actually turns out to be something that will change the way we do this. And so this is a very different situation. We're, we're taking this into the new year to finish the process and get back to the, the original way that this is supposed to work. And by the way, the House Republican Conference is committed to never being in this situation again. I'm done with short-term CRs. We are. We're resolved. So what that means is you're going to see in the beginning of this next year, we'll be walking and chewing gum at the same time. We're going to get the appropriations process running on time as it's supposed to be under law. The Budget Control Act of 1974 has very specific provisions in there on how this is to be done. Congress hasn't done that for as long as we can remember. But we're going to get back to that because that's good stewardship. The American people deserve it. And the debt situation we find ourselves in uh, necessitates that. So um, let, me, let me go over here and I'll go back for it. All right, well, that was House Speaker Mike Johnson there speaking about this looming government shutdown yeah. that uh, we have had kind of kicked down the road uh, quite a few times. I mean, this is a two-step strategy um, that he was kind of mentioning. And initially, House Democrats said, no, this is not what we mm -hmm. want. Uh, but then yesterday signaled that they may be more open to this. Yeah. So hopefully... 
avoiding tone, a showdown. Yeah, the yeah. tone is changing, but it's interesting because, as we know, hardline Republicans in his party are, mm -hmm. you know, not for continuing right. resolutions. They want to see cuts in spending. They're not going to get that with what is being right. uh, offered here with this two-step kind of solution. And what was interesting that he brought up, uh, one of the notes that I took was that he was saying it's about, you have to be wise about choosing mm -hmm. the fights. He was saying, you know, these, we want to see cuts in spending. That's probably going to come next year. We have to walk and chew gum at the same time when it right. comes to this. And one person did ask a question, uh, you know, regarding his speakership. Basically, is he worried that this kind of a situation, which was exactly what former Speaker McCarthy was in, if this is going to also kind of put him, uh, you know, in, in a tough position boat. in mm -hmm. the same boat. And he said this is a different situation. Uh, yeah. You know, it wasn't McCarthy's fault, and this is a different situation. Mm -hmm. So clearly he's he's not too worried, I guess. Right. And what was also interesting is Re Representative Matt Gates, the one who is largely responsible for right. the ousting of Kevin McCarthy, um, said that, well, at least he didn't lie to us. Mm -hmm. And so that was his whole um, thing with Mike Johnson saying, okay, yeah, it may be, you know, kind of the same situation-ish, mm -hmm. but at least he didn't lie up front. Um, and, that, and that, as we know, um, was was a real big issue. Yeah. A lot of people personal in that issues part, yeah. between them. Well, yeah.